I recently discovered the Urban Dictionary definition for SNES, so that's great. What's a first person shooter without good weapons? The answer's a bad game, but uh, Deep Rock doesn't really have any bad weapons, and that's why I'm going to talk about them for like 20 minutes. This is my longest video so far, so if you enjoy it, uh, that's good, because I put weeks of work into it. This is the weapons of Deep Rock Galactic. One of the first things that typically comes up when talking about weapons in video games is balancing. I don't really like this topic that much, I find it kind of boring. It's definitely for the nerd boys, and uh, let me tell you, I'm not a nerd boy. Regardless, here's my very brief opinion on balancing. In Update 32, the weapons are pretty well balanced. Before this, there were some issues, especially with the breach cutter, it was pretty overpowered, but it's been tweaked pretty well. I feel that balancing things isn't as important since DRG is strictly co-op. You don't really shoot at other players, at least I, I hope you don't do that. That would, that would suck if you did that. While there are some weapons you may enjoy to use more, they're all good enough to use. Personally, I prefer the Sabato over the Plasma Charger because I'm very boring, but I know some people who prefer the Plasma Charger. Any weapon can do the job, and that's great because it allows more playstyles when you want to change things up. If the variety of weapons doesn't spice your life up enough, upgrades add a large Domino's meets a pizza amount of customization to the mix. Weapon upgrades are pretty standard for the most part. More damage, larger mag size, more ammo, faster reload speed, the usual I'm upgrading a gun in a video game kind of stuff. It lets the player alter things to what they prefer, and they aren't locked to one upgrade, they can always change it later. Once you get deeper into the upgrade tree though, things start to get a bit more interesting. The final row of upgrades, which I will call Big Boy Upgrades, typically offer more significant changes to the weapon's playstyle. In my early Greenbeard days as engineer, I used the upgrade that made the shotgun fully automatic because at the time I hadn't seen the light of Turret Whip. Turret Whip enables the player to shoot their sentry to create a powered shot that does tons of damage. And also it makes you feel cool as hell. I like when upgrades add decision making to a fight, but I mostly like that this thing makes me feel cool so therefore it's good. Gunner's minigun offers some interesting choices as well. One upgrade cools the gun on each kill, avoiding overheat and allowing the player to shoot dumb idiot bugs for a longer period of time. Another upgrade does the complete opposite, where bullets just light the bugs on fire. It's like a flamethrower, but with bullets. So that's pretty cool. I think one of the most gameplay changing weapon upgrades has to be on the plasma charger. This upgrade gives you the ability to mine terrain by shooting a fully charged plasma shot while it's in the air. It takes a bit of practice to get used to this and I'd say it's probably the hardest skill to master in the game. But once you get a hang of it, it becomes a really useful support tool and if that isn't a certified POG gamer moment, I don't know what is. This stuff adds so much customization that there are endless guides available going over builds for weapons. It's a really big part of the game, and while I personally just kind of mix things up as I go and don't really care too much about the stats, some people really do enjoy making the best gamer guns possible. There's even a community built DPS calculator, and I'll put a link to that in the description if you're a big nerd. If somehow these upgrades weren't enough customization for your baby gamer brain, there's overclocks to add onto this too. Unlocked after promoting a class, overclocks are modifiers that can be attached to a weapon to change up the gameplay. Clean overclocks are typically small buffs like faster reload speed or increased ammo. Balanced overclocks make more significant changes but don't completely flip the gun around. And unstable overclocks are the crazy ones. One example of an unstable overclock would be the well-titled Spinning Death. This takes the breach cutter and makes the lasers thicker and they go-go gadgets spin when you fire them. Another great example of an unstable overclock is Fat Boy, which makes your grenade launcher shoot the equivalent of a nuclear bomb. I don't run Fat Boy though, that's for dweebs. If I'm going to use an unstable overclock for the PGL, I prefer Hyper Propellant. This one turns the grenade launcher into projectiles similar to the direct hit in TF2. High velocity and high damage to single targets. It's really fun on elimination missions. 
There are even some movement-based overclocks, one of them making Scout's shotgun probably the most fun thing I've ever done in a video game, and another one makes Engie's grenade launcher a rocket jumping machine. So not only are these base weapons great, they can be customized to what a player prefers, whether that's adding a little more ammo or damage, making a pistol fully automatic, or using the Big Bertha overclock specifically because it's called Big Bertha. It's completely up to the player. The weapons are stuffed full of choices to make, whether that's tweaking something small or changing up a playstyle completely. But no one would want to use these weapons if they looked bad and dumb. And they definitely don't look bad and dumb, they actually look pretty cool, just like my friend Garfield here. If you're not into the default weapons, there's tons of unlockable cosmetics for them, and they offer a lot of different options for making some fancy looking guns. DRG splits weapon cosmetics into two groups, frameworks and paint jobs. Frameworks alter the model of the weapon, and paint jobs alter the color of the weapon. Paint jobs can be applied to any framework. Funny enough, the separation of frameworks and paint jobs was actually implemented because of a bug. This bug allowed you to combine weapon skins in the equipment terminal. People discovered it and started asking them to implement the separation of frameworks and paint jobs, and they did so in update 28. Frameworks are a really cool cosmetic type, and I really want to see more of them in the game, so pl please add more, thank you. You know what else is pretty cool? Some good weapon animations. None of those stiff, crappy, yucky hot dog water animations. I love some good reload animations. Snappy stuff like the M1000 where everything cleanly clicks into place and the timing feels so right. This gun feels completely heavenly to reload. Watching the scout smack an empty magazine out with a full one and snap that new mag into the deep core is a pretty slick animation. And I can't really pinpoint why, but I really like the reload animation for Gunner's Burt. All these animations just feel so clean and slick. Can we put some good job Ronnie Rees in the chat, please? Once you pair these well-crafted animations with the sounds the guns make, you've got a peanut butter and jelly type scenario going on here. I've talked about this before, but this game really does have fantastic sound design through and through. This is how you make a game feel great. All of the little mechanical sounds are so nice and satisfying, and firing a gun sounds just as punchy and intense as it should. Another small thing I'd like to delve into is crosshairs. You might be thinking, who cares about crosshairs, you smelly boy? Probably only me. I especially like ones designed for specific weapons. The PGL has one that improves my ability to use the gun tenfold. Being able to predict distance with these makes the weapon so much more intuitive. The M1000 crosshair spins and shrinks as you aim a focus shot, and the revolver crosshair shrinks when you regain accuracy after a shot. Even overclocks can alter crosshairs like hyper propellant or AI stability engine. This stuff may seem really small, but there was thought put into designing these things, and I just want to thank them for being way more intelligent than me. Crosshairs help you do the most important part of a shooter, aim. So they should change to be more beneficial to the weapon. I wish this was more common in shooters, I think it's a really nice feature. All of the things I brought up in this section, weapon models, animations, sounds, and crosshairs, are essential to making a weapon feel finger licking good. You can balance a weapon all you want, but in the end, if it looks, sounds, and feels gross yucky you to use, then it'll be a gross yucky you weapon. Animation and sound design feel overlooked and underappreciated when considering what all makes a gun feel good. These cherry on top details are essential to making memorable gameplay. I brought up enemy design briefly in the beginning of this video, but I wanted to go further into it for just a little bit. DRG's enemies are really well designed, and I already went over this in a previous video, so check that out if you think I'm a cool guy. And let me tell you, I'm cool. I have this cat piano, which makes me a certified cool guy. Obviously, what you're shooting at, which in this case is some nasty bug boys, should react to being hit by weapons. Some games don't do hit reactions well, and I was trying to think of games that have bad hit reactions, and it took me a stupid amount of time to try to think of like a single game, and I honestly can't come up with anything other than maybe Skyrim or some Ubisoft games, which I guess is a testament to how important enemy design is for creating memorable combat. One thing DRG uses to its advantage is ragdolls. These add a lot of punch to an enemy being killed. On low gravity, you really get a good view of how intense the ragdolls are. It's just really satisfying to see ragdolls flying everywhere. 
There's also armor breaking, fear, it's stunning, and a lot more smaller details. One smaller detail would be shooting Glyphids in their little chompers as a final blow and it just completely melts their face. These small things make it even more fun to shoot bugs, which was already a fun concept in the first place. I don't like bugs. Hi, welcome to the portion of the video where I go through each weapon in the game and my opinion on it for possibly too long. Let's start things out with Scout's Deep Core GK2. While this weapon may be a pretty standard assault rifle, that doesn't make it any less fun to use. This gun has decent damage output, decent firing speed, and I really do love the sound it makes when you're firing it. Battle Frenzy is a really great upgrade that makes the fast boy even faster, and AI Stability Engine is one of my favorite unstable overclocks in the game. I like the deep core and it feels really great to use. It really takes me back to my early days religiously playing Scout. Scout's other primary weapon choice is the M1000 Classic. This semi-automatic rifle has two firing modes. Tapping the fire button uses one round that has high accuracy and does a decent amount of damage. The alternative fire mode is holding down the fire button, and this turns it into a focus shot. Focus shots have perfect accuracy and do double the damage of a normal shot, but you consume two rounds per focus shot. Personally, I use the upgrade that lets you reload faster after killing enemies. I think it's really nice. I'd say the most interesting overclocks available are the balanced ones. Hipster allows the player to change the gun to be better for hip firing, and Active Stability System improves focus shots. Oh, and I almost forgot about Hover Clock. This overclock slows you down if you do a focus shot midair, allowing you to basically levitate for a second while aiming to shoot an enemy. There's probably some utility to this overclock, but in the end, I just change to this when I want to look cool. I typically build this gun towards focus shot damage because I'm pretty bad at hip shots. Hitting a ton of weak point focus shots in a row feels like ascending and becoming the sequel to God. God Part 2. Speaking of God Part 2, the Boomstick has an overclock that gives you the ability to just launch yourself around the map like an insane person. I love this overclock and I'd say it's a contender for my favorite in the game. The Boomstick is a double barrel sawed off shotgun that packs quite the punch. Ghost Ship really knows how to make a great feeling shotgun. You can customize this thing a ton and it always feels really good to use. I really like the fear upgrade in tier 5, but I could see people going towards the fire damage one, and that would be pretty fun as well. There are other overclocks available, but let's be honest, I only use special powder. Next up is the Zukovs. I love the style of these things, they remind me of Dooley's and Splatoon. These fast firing SMGs have a lot of ammo, but you can really dig through it pretty fast. These bad boys boast what is possibly the best reload animation in the game as well. Scout quickly drops them out of view and brings them back up into frame by spinning them. I don't know how he reloads them in that time, but I'm very impressed. The tier 5 upgrades are both interesting. Conductive Bullets increases the damage done to enemies inside of an IFG, making those two a really great combo. Tossing down an IFG and melting a crowd of enemies in seconds feels pretty awesome. Get In Get Out is the other upgrade choice in tier 5, giving the player a movement speed bonus after emptying a clip. There are two overclocks that I think are worth mentioning. Cryo Minelets and Embedded Detonators. Cryo Minelets places these little mines when you shoot the terrain. These minelets will freeze enemies that walk over them. While I don't think this overclock is very efficient, it's really fun to use. Embedded Detonators makes your bullets put explosives inside of enemies that you shoot, and when you reload the weapon those explosives blow up. It recently got a bit of a buff in Update 32. I haven't messed with it yet, but I used to like it, so I'm assuming it's even more fun to use now. Now we're going to move on to Engineer and his default primary weapon, the Warthog Auto Shotgun. I think I have a soft spot for shotguns, I really like them. This is pretty much tied with TF2s for my favorite shotgun in any game. I currently have it built to shoot slower, and it has a very small spread, and huge damage. So I've basically created the closest thing a shotgun can be to a sniper. You can also build it to be fully automatic, and obviously I stated earlier that I really love the turret whip upgrade as well. For overclocks, I think magnetic pellet alignment and stunner are pretty interesting and I typically bounce between those two. Next up is this cute little gun called the Stubby Voltaic SMG. I really like this little dude. With a focus on electric damage output, this fast firing primary weapon is a great choice if you want to switch off the shotgun for a while and just electrocute some bugs. Electric Arc is probably the most interesting upgrade in Tier 5, adding the ability for the electrocution effect to arc to other enemies. NG really did a ukulele with this one. 
Turret Arc is one of the most unique overclocks in the entire game, but sadly it just isn't very practical in most situations. NG has another one of my favorite weapons, the Deep Core PGO. This thing really packs a punch. Throwing armor breaking on this bad boy is essential and makes the gun infinitely more fun. Add on some great sound design and trying to hit air shots to this gun and it ends up being one of the most rewarding things to use in the game. My favorite overclocks for this are Clean Sweep and Hyper Propellant. The Breach Cutter is debatably the most unique weapon in this game. This bulky mechanical nightmare shoots large purple lasers that can go through the terrain. This is a really interesting mechanic for a projectile, and it creates some pretty compelling and unique gameplay. The overclocks are some of the most varied and unique for a single weapon in this game. My personal favorite is Return to Sender. This weapon can shred through crowds and deal some serious damage to larger enemies, especially dreadnoughts. I typically don't like miniguns. I think they usually feel too bulky and slow for my kind of playstyle. The Leadstorm powered minigun is an exception though. You're given a pretty decent amount of mobility, but it still shreds through enemies. Not having to deal with reloading is also a blessing for this. Add on some interesting upgrades, overclocks, and a fun spinny gun animation and you've got yourself a great choice for a primary weapon. I already went over the upgrades for this thing earlier, but I didn't go into the overclocks. I use exhaust vectoring, and I haven't really changed it since I started using it. Bullet Hell is available, and it just makes the gun shoot funny bullets. I haven't tried it for a while, but if you want to play gunner comedy mode, this is the way to do it. The autocannon is a weapon I can't really compare to anything in another game. This big hunk of gun gives you a huge amount of ammo in a mag and packs a big punch for groups of enemies and single targets alike. Upgrading it to increase AoE damage is a good choice, and this is another weapon where armor breaking is a great choice too. I personally stick with splintering shells for my overclock, but combat mobility seems like a fun choice too. Also, I can't forget to mention Big Bertha again. What a fantastic name for an overclock. The Bulldog Heavy Revolver deals extremely high single shot damage, especially when hitting weak points. It's really great for finishing off big enemies and taking out a couple stragglers in a pinch. Currently I use a build from a Legionless video, I'll link it in a card and in the description. Elephant Rounds and Six Shooter are my favorite overclocks for this gun. The Burt is a burst fire pistol that shoots three bullets per burst. This gun does not get enough praise, and I think a lot of people just prefer the revolver because it's such a consistent high damage output, but I really like the Burt. I think it's satisfying to shoot mostly due to the sounds it makes while it's firing, and the gun has a lot of interesting upgrades, I recommend digging into it more yourself. For overclocks, I really like experimental rounds and electro mindlets sounds like a fun choice if you're looking to make some big changes to the gun. Now we move on to my favorite class, Driller. We'll start things off with his flamethrower. I usually don't like flamethrowers, but this thing just melts bugs like no other. I think a lot of this has to do with the range on the weapon. It gives you a lot of room to fight enemies and it feels pretty great. It's also extremely versatile, being decent at single target damage and great at group damage and sticky flames are really fun to mess around with too. I usually go with targets explode for my tier 5 upgrade and lighter tanks for my overclock. Sticky fuel is pretty fun to play around with too though. On the opposite side of the temperature spectrum we have the cryo cannon. I'm gonna be honest, I hated the cryo cannon for so long. I thought this weapon was slow, clunky, kinda ugly, and only remotely functional when you have a full team. Now after some tweaking this weapon is really great and it separates itself from the flamethrower in some really interesting ways. If I'm running cryo I typically bring the plasma charger with me too. I really like this combo, it reminds me of the sandman guillotine combo in TF2. Freezing enemies and switching over to the plasma charger to finish them off just feels right. I also love how effective this weapon is on flying enemies and oppressors, it really helps deviate it from the flamethrower. The cryo cannon has some absolutely crazy overclocks like ice spear and snowball that add pretty big mechanics to the weapon. It has its use and I'm glad to say that I really enjoy the cryo cannon now, I never thought I'd say that honestly. The sabata is probably my favorite secondary weapon in DRG. This semi-automatic pistol is extremely fun to shoot and it has a really nice reload animation with it too. I personally go with the Mactera toxin coating because I, I hate those flying assholes but I can see people going for volatile bullets and that being a good choice as well. This weapon probably has the most consistently good and interesting overclocks in the game, with homebrew powder being the only one that's kind of underwhelming. 
I usually use oversized magazine, but I know a lot of people love automatic fire. Explosive reload is pretty fun, and tranquilizer rounds completely changes the weapon. Lastly, we have the experimental plasma charger. This thing really is a futuristic mess of a gun, but it does offer some pretty interesting gameplay. The thin containment field is probably the best choice for a tier 5 upgrade, which allows you to mine minerals with the weapon. Heat pipe is probably the best overclock to pair with that upgrade as well. I'd say this is probably my least favorite weapon in the game because I just don't really like slow projectiles. But as a support tool, I think it's really fun to use and it can speed up a mission significantly. There is a vast sea of first person shooters out there, and let me tell you, there's definitely a lot of bad ones. Uninspired, boring, bland first person shooters are some of the most mind numbing things to experience. There are a lot of things that set DRG apart from the brand flake first person shooters, but I would say the main thing is the amount of control a player has over their playstyle. There's no reason to create an absolutely absurd amount of weapons when you can make a few really great ones that are unique and allow the player to tweak them as they please. It's a system that at first glance I didn't really give enough credit and grasp how engaging and interesting it is. And it fits so perfectly within the setting of the game. These dwarves work for a dumpster fire of a company and they're left to themselves to make the job easier and modding the weapons is just a way of doing that. There are a lot of ways to design a class and its weapons, but the focus on customizability over quantity is an amazing decision, especially for the smaller team developing this game. And I really can't name another game that does weapon upgrades this well. I wanted to ask what your favorite weapon is in the game and why. And also, what are your favorite overclocks? And thank you so much for watching all the way through this video. This one is a lot longer than my previous videos, and it's taken a really long time to put this thing together. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll leave you with this really important image and robot getaway, because it's the end of a SNES video, what do you expect? If you enjoyed this video, go check out the rest of my videos I've made on DRG. I have quite a few of them now, and I think they're all pretty good. Again, thank you all so much for watching through this video. Rock and Stone. <laughs>